The third step, STA access. The third module, the first being AP coming online. The second, the distribution of WLAN service configurations. And the third, STA access. Let's draw a line here. If STA1 wants to obtain an IP address, it will send out what's called a DHCP discover message. This DHCP discover message will reach AP1, which will then pass it on to AC1. Will it send it? It will capture a packet, AP1, right? On its T000 interface, I capture packets. Look, I can send the DHCP discover message, right? Everyone, please notice I will tag this DHCP discover message with its PVID 200. This is crucial. This DHCP discover message, I will tag it with PVID 200. I just mentioned it, teacher. How does this PVID 200 come about? Is it communicated to the AP by your AC1, right? When your AP1 receives user traffic, you need to tag it with the corresponding service WLAN PVID 200. Then this packet reaches AC1. Can port 2 of AC1 receive and process VLAN 200 traffic? Definitely not. Why? Because look, my AC1's port 2 configuration, this CUR interface G001002, right? Now my port 2 configuration looks like this. It's configured as an access interface, and it's been assigned to VLAN 100. Then, can it receive and process VLAN 200 traffic? Definitely not. So why? Because STA1 can't get an address, as your AC1's port 2 has its interface type and VLAN capabilities mixed up. So what do we do? Well, it's not exactly simple, but we need to ensure that STA1 can obtain an address from the 192.168.200.0 slash 24 subnet, right? There's a big prerequisite, which is I must ensure the capwap tunnel between AC1 and AP1 isn't broken. That's a big prerequisite. Do you all understand what I mean? Let me explain to you all. You see, AP and AC1 need to establish a CAPWAP tunnel. For instance, this is a CAPWAP packet sent by AP1. Look, the source of this packet is 100.180. The IP address of AP1, the destination is the IP address of AC1. This type of CAPWAP packet does not carry any PVD, it's just a normal packet. My AP1 sends such a normal CAPWAP tunnel packet, a normal data packet, which reaches AC1, and my AC1's port 2 will tag it with the corresponding PVID100, right? It's handed over to AC1's interface VLA100 for processing. You all should understand this because my port 2 has a SANS interface, I receive a normal data pin, and I will tag it with a PVID VLAN100. After tagging it with PVD VLAN100, this data packet is handed over to my interface VLAN100 for processing. Then my interface VLAN100, which is a DHCP server, what does it do? It's not a DHCP server, not a DHCP server. The address has already been allocated, right? The address has already been allocated. This CAPWAP tunnel from AC1 will then make a return packet to AP1, right? When this return packet is sent out, it will also be tagged with a PVID 100, but when it is sent from port 2, this PVID 100 is stripped off. When the return packet is sent out from interface VLAN 100, it needs to be tagged with a PVID, but when it is sent from port 2, this PVID 100 needs to be stripped off, because this port is an access port. Can you understand? Any data packet processed by my interface VLAN 100, I need to tag it with the corresponding PVID 100, but when it is sent from port 2, the PVID needs to be stripped off because my port is an access port. Port. Restored to a normal data pin. Restored to a normal data pin, handed over to AP1. At this point, your AC1 and AP1 can establish and maintain a CAPWAP tunnel through management VLAN 100, right? This big prerequisite cannot change. The tunnel cannot be affected in any way. So what do we do now? I need to maintain the CAPWAP tunnel between AC1 and AP1 and ensure 
that STA1 can obtain an address in the 200.0 subnet through VLAN 200 business WLAN. So what do we do? I need to change the interface type of port 2. I need to adjust it so it can handle both VLAN 100 and VLAN 200 traffic. You can change it to trunk or you can change it to hybrid. Then it receives a normal data pin, port, hybrid, PVID, VLAN 100. When my port 2 receives a normal CAPWAP packet sent by AP1, I tag it with a PVID 100 and hand it over to my interface VLAN 100 for processing. When I return a packet to your AP1, when it's sent out, how do I handle the VLA100 traffic? Strip the PVID100 because I received a normal data pin, and when I return it to you, there's no need to carry a PVID, right? For traffic regarding PVID100, P-O-R-T, H-Y-B-R-I-D, called untagged VLAN100. That's how I configure it. AC1 and AP1, their cap WAP tunnel will not be affected, will not be affected. And then we continue. Next, I need to resolve how STA1 can obtain an address in the 200 subnet through VLAN 200, right? My STA1 sends a normal DHCP discover message to AP1. AP1 will tag this data packet with PVID 200 and hand it over to AC1. Does my AC1's port 2 need to have the capability to handle VLAN 200 traffic? Yes, right? Then, when my AC1's interface VLAN 200 replies with a DHCP offer message, do I carry PVID 200 or strip PVID 200? Think about it. Do I carry or strip? How should I set this command to port hybrid tagged VLAN 200, right? Or should I set it to untagged VLAN 200? Do I carry or strip? Carry, right? Why carry? Because I receive traffic with PVID 200. When I return a packet to you, I still need to carry this PVID. At this time, doesn't it meet our requirements? My port 2 can handle both VLAN 100 and VLAN 200 traffic can ensure that the CAPWAP tunnel between AC1 and AP1 is normally established and can ensure that STA1 can obtain an address in the 200 subnet through VLAN 200 business WLAN, right? I need to change the configuration of port 2. Remove this command, flash these commands. Now let's see if STA1 can obtain an address. It's obtaining an IP. I'll disconnect and reconnect. Turn it off. It's obtaining an IP. Look. It's connected, right? Can it obtain an address? IP config got an address of 200.51, right? What kind of address is 200.51? It's that simple, isn't it? Not difficult. I'll paste its MAC address, paste out its MAC address. This then is the so-called STA access.